This month saw the release of Captain Marvel, and while the movie is tracking to make $1 billion, its reception hasn't been the best. From thousands of audience reviews being deleted on Rotten Tomatoes for being toxic assaults to the decreasing critic review score, the movie clearly isn't of the high quality everyone expects from Marvel Studios. I wasn't planning on making this video until I saw the sheer number of critic reviews and journal articles which had crucial flaws as to prevent them from being taken seriously. That being the writer's desire to focus their writing or a portion of it on social agendas and abuse instead of the movie itself. As many are aware Rotten Tomatoes is the go-to site for reviews. Until recently the site had no problems with anyone disliking a movie. Review bombing, as many put it, refers to a movie being bombarded with poor reviews, hence decreasing the overall score of the film. After many people planned on not watching Captain Marvel and bringing its want to watch score down to 27%, Rotten Tomatoes removed this feature. Once the movie was released, it had a stable critic score of roughly 83% or so. The audience score was well below 50%. Journalists responded by stating that hurt sexist men were behind the review bombing, even going so far as to say that people fought back against the misogynistic men to bring the audience score for Captain Marvel above 60%. The interesting thing is that the movie itself now has a critic score of 78% and an audience score of 62%, which are not too different in value. Both audiences and critics see the movie as merely good, maybe great. So why do people continue to praise this film and abuse those that do not? It's because of the media. I study education and recently had to watch a video for one of my classes. It involved a modern test of the Stanley Milgram obedience experiment. There are a few differences between the original experiment and the one conducted by the ABC, but many are a result of the new rules and regulations surrounding experiments including humans. The experiment involves testing how a person would follow orders of someone in power or with authority. Two people would take part. One would take the role of a teacher, asking questions and delivering punishment when the answer was incorrect. And the other, a student. The teacher would be watched by the experiment conductor. The student, unknown to the teacher, would be an actor faking heart problems. They would purposely get answers wrong and scream in pain. And at times, demand for the experiment to stop as they were shocked by the increasing voltages. The voltages reached up to 150 volts in the modern test and over 200 in the original one. Of course, the student wasn't actually being shocked. I will now refer to just the modern test. Once the teacher, that is the volunteer who is allowed to leave at any time, shocked the student at 150 volts, the student would shout that they are in pain and remind the teacher of their heart issues. They would demand that they be unstrapped from the machine and the experiment end. This prompts the teacher to stop for a moment and turn to the conductor of the experiment, who would be sitting behind them taking notes. The conductor, a person of authority who is in charge of the experiment, would tell the teacher to ignore the screams of pain, telling them that the vaults are not dangerous, and to continue. More than 60% of teachers, both men and women, would continue with the test going above 150 volts. The experiment proved how people would listen to authority how people would rarely think for themselves or hold the blame on themselves and continue to follow the orders of someone trained in the profession. So how does this relate to the critic reviews and Captain Marvel? Basically, the average person reads a review or article that praises Captain Marvel and calls haters of the movie sexist man babies. The reader would be inclined to believe the writer as they are professionals in their field and people of authority. This garners support for one side of the argument without allowing for its opposition to even have a chance to provide its argument or be recognized. I will now share several critic summaries, as these are the words suggest, the overall message of the review, and what many people would read. I am in no way attacking any of these critics and want to emphasize that there are more to the reviews by these critics than what follows. I am simply stating a flaw in this portion of their movie review or what is summarized by their movie review and presented on Rotten Tomatoes. I will probably say some of these names wrong, so please forgive me. Larushka Ivan Zadeh says, Marvel takes a feminist leap forward with this superhero movie to change superhero movies forever. How exactly does it change superhero movies? What about Wonder Woman? I read this full review and she continues by saying, it's also the first to be directed, okay, co-directed, they can only trust ladies so far, by a woman. 
What an unnecessary jab at men not trusting women. It also doesn't relate to the film's quality itself. As she continues, yet if you actually manage to watch it, unlike those anti-feminists who trolled about it beforehand, wait, what? Why are you bringing in such a small minority who did troll the movie? Much of the hate going into the movie was deserving for what Brie Larson said. These parts of her review don't focus on the movie itself and clearly show her biasness towards the titled character. She has not taken into consideration the surrounding movie environment, such as Wonder Woman, but considers the surrounding social environment regarding what she views as men being unable to or unwanting to trust women. Let's move on. David Metzger says, Finally, the MCU has someone who fights like a girl. I really don't know how to respond to everything that is wrong with that one sentence. Sarah Knight Adamson states in her review, Captain Marvel stars Brie Larson, Academy Award winner, Room 2015, as Carol Danvers, the first female superhero from Marvel Cinematic Universe, MCU, films. Yes! The error in this review is obvious. Captain Marvel is not the first female superhero in the MCU. Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, Okoye, Gamora, Nebula and more female heroes already exist and have starred as key characters in several MCU films. Fans have also wanted a Black Widow title film for many years, and the Wasp was a titled character in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Funnily enough, I found more reviews stating how the movie was good, but could have been better. A lot of the blame falls on the poor writing and Larson's at times wooden acting. Overall, it's astounding how many people claim that giving a movie a poor rating makes you sexist, and since it's happening on a wide scale, the movie is being review bombed. The media claims that there is a sexist agenda with audience score, but that is a blatant lie, which they promote. At this rate, any movie which has a high critic rating and a low audience score could be considered review-bombed by audiences. Heck, take a look at Sharknado. Wait, what?